Hi and welcome to this video. In this video, you're going to see how to access MariaDB server remotely. So for this to work, you'll just need to have a dedicated or static IP. And the reason for that is so that you don't have to keep changing the IP on your server, the settings on your server. So I'm just going to use a VPN and I will use this IP for that purpose. We're going to see where this is needed. As well, I have this post, I've just created it, and you can use this to follow along. I didn't give in-depth explanation for various steps here, so you're probably going to get lost if you just follow the post. Make sure you watch, watch the video while following along with the post. At the end of the video, we're going to test whether we can log in to our MariaDB server remotely, and I'm going to use, I'm going to use my SQL Workbench. So we're going to add a connection and test whether it's possible to connect to that MariaDB server. So let's just get started. First thing, as I search into your server, and this is a server where MariaDB is running. The first thing we need to create a user on our MariaDB, and this user is the user you're going to use to access MariaDB remotely you're going to be able to access from that IP. This is an IP for your network, for your internet. So if you don't have a static IP, if you want to connect to your server, you'll always have to change these settings every time. And you can see that is a lot of work. That's why you need to have a static IP that doesn't change if you want to be able to access your server remotely. So let's go back and I want to open a text editor. Let me just paste my IP there. And I want to edit the command. The first thing, I will need to create a user on my DB once I log in. So I'm just going to copy this. Copy and I want to edit it on the text editor before I run it on my SSH. So I'm going to take my IP address. This is the IP for my internet. You can get a static IP from most VPNs. Best create user so the so that is a name of the user you can change that to whatever you prefer and that is a password for that user this is what you'll use to log in remotely so that is my user password and then let's come back and we also need to grant privileges so we are going to grant privileges to this user on a specific database copy control v and we want to grant all privileges on database name. So I haven't created the database. I'm just going to create a database called dbs10. So grant all privileges on dbs10 to that user, to our db user. And of course, we want the host name to be the same as our IP here. So I'm going to paste that in there. Paste. So what does this mean? This means that this user will have all privileges on a database called DBS10 and will also have access to all tables on that database. If you want to give access to all databases to this user, just do something like this. And this is going to give access to all tables on your MariaDB server. But it's always best practice to just give a user access to a specific database. So these are the first commands we are going to run. But before that, let me create this DB. I haven't created a database. This is a new server. I installed the server, showed you how to install MariaDB. I didn't, I didn't create any server here. So I'm going to log into MariaDB. I'll just use my SQL. So since I am the root user, I can just log in. But if you're not the root user, you're going to have to enter dash p, dash u, dash p for the user and the password. There we go. So if I was to show databases, these are the databases that I have and I want to create another database here. So I've just pressed control L to clear the screen. 
So it is not mandatory to use capital letters in SQL, but most people usually just use caps. It's not mandatory. So I'm going to create a database. What was the name of my DB? It was something called DBS10. You'll see my database is now there. So this is the database we're going to use as an example in this tutorial. First, I will create the user. Control Shift V to paste. Enter. And then I will grant all privileges on the database to this user. Paste. Enter. We can just view all the user. We can view all our users. Just to confirm that it's been created. Paste. Enter. And you can see our user is there. And the host is that. So every time you want to log in, you're going to have to specify the host. Because if you don't specify the host, it's going to assume that you want to log in via local host, which is not the case. Logging in via local host is logging in while you are on this server. So control L to clear the screen. And then let's continue on. So we've done the first bit. The first bit is creating the user, giving the user privileges. And then the next one is the bind address. Now this is important because here I haven't added the correct link. I'm going to show you how to find the correct file to edit. And you're going to add the IP address of your server. So for a moment, I'm just going to press Control Z. And the reason for this is because I want to find out my IP, the IP of this server. So I can do IPA and it's going to show me my IP. Yeah, there's my IP, my INET, my INET. Copy this one as well. Let me put it here on my, I'll put it there on my notepad and I'll, I will go back to MariaDB. No, I don't really need to go back to MariaDB. I just need to, I need to figure out which file to edit here. So the configuration files for MariaDB will usually be inside of Etsy, MySQL, MariaDB. And there's a way you can figure out which is a file, the ultimate file that MariaDB uses for its configuration. And to do that, you can just do something like, I'll do control L to clear the screen. So you can do something like MariaDB dash dash help dash v and if you just go all the way to the top if you go all the way to the top you're going to see default options are read from the following files in order so etsy my cnf etsy my sql my cnf that so if you want to add custom if you want to add custom rules for my for MariaDB, you should use that because that's the one that's mostly used. Or you can also use that, but go with this one to put everything in the same home. And that is my SQL folder. So that's not the one we're going to edit. The one we're going to edit, I'll do control L and I will do ls slash Etsy. My MySQL tab. So the one we want to edit is inside of this directory, MariaDB conf.d tab tab to autocomplete. All right. So the file we want to edit is inside here. So you can see 50 client and if you if you if you open any of these files, just remember that if you're not the root user, you're going to need to use sudo because you cannot access this or you can switch to the root user by doing so if you do that you can switch to the root user this will affect the client this one 
will also affect the client. So the one we want to edit is this. And this you can see affects the server. So if I was to do, let me bring back ls and I'll just do 50 dash s and then press tab to to complete. And I'll do control A to go to the beginning of the line. Control A, control D, delete. And then I will enter VI. Remember, if you're not the root user, use sudo or switch to the root user. And I want to copy this. It may depend on your on your Linux OS because in this case, this is Debian. And Ubuntu, it's going to be the same. This is Ubuntu and it's going to be in the same location. So you have to figure out the location yourself. Just do ls like I've done. Enter. So in this file, there's something about binding address. There it is. So you can see right now, the bound address is a loopback localhost address. Before I even do this, let's go to Google and I want to show you now, this is the right way to do it nowadays because in the past, you've seen, if you watch other videos, you're going to see this will be changed to 0000, and that, and that is an old, an old way. It used to work then, but nowadays, MariaDB allows, allows chaining of addresses that you can bind. So if I was to search for MariaDB remote, if I search for MariaDB remote access, there is something on MariaDB. Okay, configuring MariaDB for remote client access. So if you go to this link, I'm sorry if the video is getting too long, but let's just cover this, it's important. So you can see here from MariaDB starting with 10.11, multiple comma separated addresses can now be given to bind address. Now this means that you can specify a specific IP that you can bind your MariaDB server to. It doesn't have to be the local host and you don't have to bind the internet. So 0 0.000 is just like the internet. Okay. So here, let's edit this. And here you're going to add the server that you want to bind. And in this case, we want to bind this server where MariaDB is installed. So the IP for that was, the IP for that was this, copy, so I can do shift A to get me into edit mode. And that's going to take me to the end of the line. You can comma separate them and then control shift V, the IP that I want to allow. So that is the bind address for this server. So I'm going to escape and then shift ZZ. And also if you want to find out more other options, what else you can do, just come here. So if I was to do this, let's see what this is going to what this is going to bring now. I'll just do control L to clear the screen. Unable to connect to remote connection refused. Let's Let's restart MariaDB. So I can just do system CTL restart MariaDB. There we go. This is why it's important to use aliases. Create aliases and then you don't have to mistype anything. It's now restarted. Let's see how we can allow our local IP to access the firewall to access MariaDB using port 3306 using the default MariaDB port. So that's the next thing. If we come here, we've edited the file. The next thing is to allow our IP. So I don't know which firewall you're using, but for me in Ubuntu, I'm sure the default one is UFW. So I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to come here 
And now you need to allow your internet IP that is a local IP, the dedicated or static IP that you want to use. And you can get dedicated IPs from, from VPNs. So this is going to allow access from this port and it will allow it to literally anywhere on our server and the protocol is TCP on port 3306. If I do UFW starters, UFW starters, you'll see it is active. That's good. This is Ubuntu 24.04. So I will paste that. Rule added. If we do UFW starters again, you're going to see that our port is now allow and it is allowing from our IP. So the moment of truth. Let's try and log into our server remotely. Let's try and log into MariaDB remotely using the MySQL Workbench remote client. Connection name, you can just give it a name, sample. Sample 12, so people don't think this is our first sample. Sample 12, and then the host name. Host name is the host name, this is a the IP of your server. This is the IP where MariaDB is running. Copy. Come to Workbench. And we're using the default port. If you change your port, if you change your port, you should enter the correct port there. Of course, Control A to delete everything in there and then enter your IP. The username, that is a user that we created for this MariaDB rdb user paste anything else that you need to add password we can leave it there at default and then let me copy my password let me copy my password well in advance copy test the connection it's going to ask me for the password let me enter the password and you can save the password or not okay and in con compatible non-standard server version or control or connection protocol detected that is not a problem the only thing we care about right now is that our server can connect successful successfully successfully made the mysql connection there we go so once you see that once you test and it can connect you can just click ok and it's going to it's going to add it there and if you want to do whatever you want to do with mysql workbench with your database you can just open continue there you go you can run your queries you can do whatever you want with your database. So I hope the video is not too long, but this is how you can enable remote MySQL access. All right, so I hope this video will help you connect to your MariaDB remotely. That's it for this video. If you have any question, let me know. If you also want to see how you can use SSH tunneling to access your database remotely, let me know. I don't want to create the video if no one is interested. If that's something you want, let me know and I can create a video for how to access MariaDB server or MySQL server remotely by SSH tunneling. That's it for this one. If you have any question, let me know.